This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. So let's go through and have a look at the world of swaps. So what's a swap? Uh, well, you've probably never experienced a swap in any of your lives, uh, unless you work in the finance department of a large business. Uh, but there are trillions and trillions of dollars of swap deals in existence around the world. So what is a swap? Well, effectively, it's very literally it's a swap of, of interest. You know, we're in the world of debt, aren't we, at the moment? Uh, and it is an interest rate swap. OK, so you have two companies that have borrowed money. Uh, and what happens is that by swapping the interest payments, not the loan, just the interest payments themselves, what can happen is that the two companies can both borrow at a cheaper rate than they would be able to without the swap. Sounds crazy, doesn't it? But it works because what's going to happen is let's just say you have a company that can borrow fixed uh, at 12 percent or so. Let's just say fixed at 10 percent, shall we? Uh, but by entering into a swap arrangement, it can get that fixed rate cheaper than 10 percent. I'll show you how it works shortly, but that's the basic idea of a swap. You have your preferred form of borrowing, whether that's fixed or variable, or if you like floating, as it's sometimes referred to. And then what happens is that you get your preferred rate of borrowing at a cheaper rate. OK, so let's just go through it slowly, shall we? As to why you'd want fixed, why you would want floating rates of interest. OK, uh, if you're going through there and looking at your fixed rate borrowing, uh, the reason why you like fixed rates is because of certainty, isn't it? And if there's certainty, then there is no risk. OK, if I borrowed fixed at 10 percent, then that's it. If interest rates go up, interest rates go down, I will pay 10 percent regardless. OK, uh, so I've got no interest rate risk, but I do potentially lose out if interest rates fall below my current rate of interest. OK. However, what you may decide to do there is you may decide to go with your floating rate levels of interest. OK, uh, why might you go with floating? Well, one, it could be if you expect interest rate to go into fall and they do fall, then you're going to pay less. OK, which makes sense. But don't forget, there's also a chance, isn't there, that if interest rates go up, you'll pay more. Uh, so it all depends upon whether your predictions in the future uh, are correct. Uh, the other area why you may wish to borrow at floating uh, is where your income rises and falls uh, is the rate of interest for. OK, so if interest rates go up, uh, if that's the case, uh, then maybe your income rises as well. OK, so you want to try and match the two together, don't we? OK, uh, so you may be in a situation that you have a floating rate of interest. But maybe you want to switch it as well. OK, yeah. not only do you want to get your interest rates cheaper, but you might want to switch from floating to variable. That is another use uh, of an interest rate swap instead of just paying off the loan and then taking out a new loan. An interest rate swap can make it much easier. But from our perspective, the, 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 the reason why it tends to be done is to get our preferred rate of borrowing at a cheaper rate okay, than what we could get. On the open market why does that actually come about uh, well it's because of different companies credit ratings and one company could be much better off than another in terms of its credit ratings so it might have an advantage in terms of the fixed rate market it might have an advantage in terms of the, the floating rate market uh, so it could have advantage in one and not the other in which case that would be the uh, a comparative advantage because it has advantage in one and not the other. Or possibly it could be that they have advantage in both the floating and fixed rate markets, i.e. they can borrow cheaper in both the markets. So therefore they have what we refer to as an absolute advantage. OK, uh, so what we're going to go through and do is we're going to look at this scenario to see how. And I know you don't believe me, uh, but I'll show you in a minute how we can go through with a loan that we have in place to ensure that that loan becomes cheaper from swapping the interest payments with another party. So you need two parties, ourselves and the counterparty, uh, 
So to make sure there that we swap the interest payments and therefore make it overall cheaper. Should we put it into practice? Let's have a look. Okay, so we've got the example there. Uh, interest rate swaps one. Uh, and it wants us to demonstrate how a swap can benefit both of the companies. Okay, uh, so what you've got there, company X can borrow at a fixed rate of 10% or a floating rate of LIBOR plus 3%. Uh, LIBOR stands for the London Intrabank Offered Rate. Okay, so think of it as a variable rate of interest uh, that is the, the average of all the borrowing rates uh, charged between banks in London. Uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, okay? So just think of it as a variable rate of interest between banks, okay? The base rate of interest, if you like, okay? Uh, so company X can borrow fixed at 10, LIBOR floating plus three, okay? Uh, and company Y, oh, doesn't look to have as good a credit rating, does it? Uh, because it borrowed at a fixed rate of 12 or a floating rate of LIBOR plus six and a half. So what you've got there is company X can borrow in both markets more cheaply than what company Y can do. So what we could say there is that company X has what is known as, if I get it right, an absolute advantage, okay? Because it has advantage in both of the markets. If it was only able to borrow in one of the conference or one of the markets cheaper than the other, uh, then it would be a comparative advantage. But here we have absolute advantage. Okay, could be a small multiple choice style question. Okay, and it says that company X wishes to borrow at a fixed rate. Uh, company Y wishes to borrow at a floating rate. Okay. So how do we go through there and play around with it and work it through, okay? Uh, well, there's two ways that you can do it, and I'm going to look at it the way that might be the more difficult to start off with, but ultimately it will work with every question that you ever do, okay? Uh, so what we've got is you've got company X has an advantage in both of the markets. Which one does it have the better advantage in? Which one does it pay the least amount but if you look at the fixed rate it pays 10 percent compared to 12 so it's only two percent cheaper but if you look there at is it company x's floating rate it can borrow a lot more cheaply can't it so if that's the case then what's going to happen is that company x even though it wants fixed it's going to borrow at variable, okay. Oh, what, what, what? Yes, it does the opposite of what it wants, effectively. Okay, or we can say there. Well, it gets the biggest advantage within the floating rate market, so borrow floating. Okay, uh, and therefore, for the swap to work, the counterparty has to borrow fixed. Otherwise, it just doesn't doesn't work at all. Okay, so what have we got? Pardon me. Okay. Uh, so, how do we work it through? Well, what we're going to go through and do there, first of all, uh, is work out, is it the saving? So, how much interest would be saved if we borrow, as we've shown there, okay, so X at variable or floating, and Y at fixed. And if we borrow at what we don't want and then swap the payments, what would we actually have been paying if we hadn't have entered into the swap? Because don't forget, X wants fixed. X wants 10%, doesn't it? Okay, so this is what X wants. This is what Y wants. So what we want to do is we want to give them what they want, but cheaper on the swap. Okay, so let's have a look at the interest saving. And, and to do that, we compare what we have with the swap compared to what we have without the swap. Okay, so with the swap, was it that X wanted 10%? 
fix, so took out variable at LIBOR plus 3. And Y took out, was it the uh, fixed, because it wanted variable. Again, we have to think in opposites. So therefore, what we've got there, is it LIBOR plus 15? Okay, without the swap, uh, X would borrow fixed at 10. Y would borrow, is it variable at, was it 6.5? So that goes through there and gives me, is it without the swap? The two companies combined will pay LIBOR plus 16.5%. So all of a sudden, what you can see now is that the overall interest paid is cheaper with the swap. If that's the case, what's the saving? Well, the saving is one and a half percent. Okay. And what that then has to do is we have to give that to each of the parties. Okay. So the saving is one and a half percent. We're going to split that, aren't we? So that therefore means is that naught. Point seven five each. Okay. So if we go through there uh, and look at what actually then needs to go through and happen, we've worked out the interest saving. Let's then look, is it at what the swap will then generate? So what will be the outcome of the swap? Well, X wanted fixed. Y wanted floating. Uh, X could get fixed, was it at 10? Y could get floating, was it LIBOR plus 6.5? But from the swap, what's going to happen is they are going to save 0.75% each. So what we have there is that X is fixed as a result of the swap will be 9.25%. Uh, Y's will be there. Is it, let me get this right, LIBOR plus 5.75%. Both of which are cheaper than if they went to the bank. So if X went to the bank and borrowed at its fixed rate of 10%, it can now borrow variable, swap the interest payments and get its fixed rate uh, cheaper than it would if it did everything by itself. Similarly with Y. Y wants floating, but to make the swap work, it's borrowed fixed. And then as we'll show in a moment, we then get what we desire at a cheaper rate. You know, if Y just went to the bank and said, I want a floating rate of interest, it would cost them liable plus six and a half percent. But by borrowing fix, swapping the interest payment, so X pays Y's interest, Y pays X's interest, then they end up with a cheaper rate. Okay. Uh, the big issue there, I suppose, is how do we go through and have that arise? Okay. Have I got enough space? I think I have just about on my pays there. Excellent. So how does that go through and happen? Well, we look at company X. We look at company Y. Okay. So what we have a look at there is we look at what happens is it if they entered into it without the swap. So effectively what happens now. Okay. Or should we say there before. Let's just move that over a little bit. So I space. Uh, so before we enter into any swap, okay, uh, X wanted fix, didn't it? Uh, so it took out variable. Counterintuitive, but that's the way these work. So they could get liable plus three variable. Y wanted variable or floating, so took out fixed. And that was there at 12. Okay, so that's where I would start. That's the first thing that I would do in terms of showing how it works. Okay. Uh, leave yourself a few lines, uh, at least three or four. And then what we go through and do there is we look at what happens with the swap. So if you like, what happens afterwards? 
Uh, and what happens afterwards, that's looking at what happens after the saving. Okay. So X, uh, was it that needs to end up with 9.25? So it wanted fix, so borrowed variable. Uh, and Y wanted variable, so borrowed fix. And, and Y's variable rate after the swap was LIBOR plus 5.75. Okay, so what happens now? Now we have to swap the interest rate payments. Okay, so what's going to happen there is I'd always deal with the floating one first. So what you've got there is that Y pays Z its floating rate. Okay, because if I'm oh, sorry. Y pays X. Careful. Too many X, Y's, and Z's today, but there we go. Uh, so Y pays X, okay, the floating rate of interest. So what we've got normally, the way these things work, is that they just pay the LIBOR, okay. So the uh, X, sorry, yeah, Y pays X, the floating LIBOR, okay. So that is the third step. And then what happens, step four, is effectively just a, a balancing figure to make sure that it all works. In that there, what happens now is that X pays Y and we will pay the fixed rate. Now, how does that fixed rate work? Okay. Uh, well, if you look there, if you look at X's column on the far left-hand side, the, the, the two LIBORs, effectively cancel each other out don't they okay so you've got there is it negative three uh, which x is paying if they need 9.25 to make that balance up that needs to be is it 6.25 okay so because y is paying x's variable amount or floating amount of interest what x ends up paying is the 6.25 plus the three on top of its floating rate loan to pay 9.25 and then that 6.25 is received by y and again if you add that up if you got negative 12 plus 6.25 that gives you negative 5.75 so a payment of 5.75 y is paying the LIBOR to x as well so you've got LIBOR plus 5.75 okay there you go. That's it. Okay. It's magic, isn't it? You can see there that X wanted fixed. It's got fixed. But to work it, it has to do the opposite of what it wishes. Okay. So that's the other way of looking at it. Yeah. But I think the better way, instead of saying, well, if we want fixed, we're going to borrow variable. Or if we want variable, we're going to borrow fixed. Not every question will say what each business wants. OK, and if they don't say that, you need to look at the world of comparative or absolute advantage and look at where we have the advantage in that market, because whatever market you have the advantage in, that is what you should borrow in. OK, so here, company X had absolute advantage, so had advantage in both markets, but had a better advantage in the floating rate, so borrowed at floating, okay? I could take that question and remove that line there at the bottom, okay? Company X wishes to borrow fixed, Y wishes to borrow floating. You can remove that and still show how the swap can benefit both companies regardless of what they want. Yeah, because if X has the better advantage in the floating market, it will borrow floating and therefore end up with fixed. OK, so there's a, there's a couple of steps, if you like, that you can go through there and follow. You first of all need to work out the interest saving and split the saving by looking at what happens with the swap. And without. OK, once you've got that, I would then look at the outcome. Uh, so what we could actually get net of any savings if we did it all by ourselves and then deduct any saving. OK, and then what you've got there is to show how it actually works. Uh, 
how much variable does one company pay to the other and therefore what's the net amount fixed that the other company then has to pay okay have a go work it through uh have a play around with the next example is it that example number two and um, once you've worked it through look at the answer see how you get on and then i'll record a video in a moment to go through and look at example number two good luck